Corey, that's by far the most fired up we've ever seen you. We didn't get a chance to hear your post by a speech. We go through your line right after that win. I did exactly what I wanted to do. You know, I was with the build up played out perfect. You know, I talked to my brother the other day and he told me when you got there, I know you hurting broke up, I'm hurting for you. You know, you got four this be your fourteenth fight. And I'm sitting here watching the media and hearing what the people say, and it's kind of crazy because you beat the top guys and they still disrespect you. And they give you no love and it hurts because you my little brother. I know how hard you worked your whole life and stuff like this and they disrespect. And he told me straight up, we need to go out there and say, if you can get us a ground, ground and pound. But if not, you need to get us to the 815 pass. Well, let them feel your hurt with them knuckles. I don't think nothing else. Um, me and my coaches, we knew we better, we the best in the light heavyweight division. You know, I start. People don't realize I started this with three fights. I came here from three fights, ultimate fighter one, and I'm here. Here we are, what, 17, 18 fights later, and I'm still standing. So the post fight was pretty much just telling him his levels to this man. I said it in a more of a tired tone and disrespectful way, but pretty much what I told him is levels. Build your way up. Quit trying to jump up. This is my place. I earned my spot. Now go back and earn yours. There's levels to this shit. Cork and I'm here. Uh, you kind of brushed off a lot of the criticism pre-fight, but uh, clearly a lot of emotions. How fulfilling was it to not only win the fight, but do it so emphatically and sort of shut up all the naysayers? It's one of the best feelings in the world. Yeah. Like I said before, I've been, the way, I, the way I live my life, the way my life has been, a lot of times I've earned different things and it's just never been given to me. You know? Like I said, it's, we're in a world now where you don't get what you earn anymore, you get what you take. Uh, so it's obviously Raz put on a big finish over Chris Weidman. How would you compare your statement to his and make your case sort of for why you should be the next guy to be fighting John Jones? My case is he knocked out Chris Weidman. I just knocked out the hype train. You know, Chris Weidman had, I mean, lost in his last fight. You know, Chris is my guy. I love him to death. You know, we trained together. I helped him with Luke Rocco. Nothing against him at all. He's a great mixed martial artist. I respect the hell out of him. But it ain't like he went out there and knocked out a guy that was the hype train that was pushing to the title. You know, Dominic Reyes, he had a slow build like me. We probably in the same place. You know, Chris Wyman was the champ, but the key word there was was. You know what I mean? And right now, Johnny Walker was the person they wanted to be the champ. That it factor. Not destroy the it factor. So put him back at the back of the bus and move him to the front. Was there so any you saw a post fight that uh, he had been knocked out before, and you knew that. Did you go into that knowing that that might be there, and that was that what you were going for? 100%. You know, I'm a mixed martial artist. I stay. A lot of people don't. They'll see his last fight and they go, oh my God, he did this. Mm -hmm. And I fell into that trap before against Jimmy Manley. And I knew I couldn't do that. You gotta go back, do your research, find out people's weaknesses. And uh, I studied deeply. You know, when he came into the UFC from contender, I started following him, looking up his stuff, realizing I knew right then, oh my dude got knocked out with a right hand early. And again, overhand right when he got knocked out twice in the fight. He got up and got knocked out again. And uh, actually a buddy of mine, Carl and his wife Natalie, when I went to their house, I said, Patrice, and she was like, just remember, he's been knocked out with the right hand. Your right hand will put him to sleep. This was like a month ago. And I told her, we already planned on it. We're going to set it up the right way. If we get the takedown, we're going to ground and pound. If not, we know the right hand will be there. So I was putting in there with my mixed martial arts skills and open mind and focused on the chin. Was there anything that Johnny Walker did or said, you know, leading up to a fight that irritated you or made you feel disrespected? Yeah. Everything. And his presence. Him being here. And I'm dead serious. Y'all laughing. It's not the only smile on my face. I've been here, like I said, I've earned my stripes. If I can come in there, doing the worm. And in fact, in the, the face off in the media, he still did the little fake trip coming up the stairs. And could Chris hurt himself and fuck up my money? I had to prove that was, that was a problem. Don't do that. Be serious. This is business. It's level. Be a professional. You know, I got to apologize. Like I said, I wasn't too professional with my post screen and all that. But you got to think with all the tension I had, like my brother said, I'm hurt. You know, I sit at home with my wife and my kid, and we see the stuff come on the media. and. You hear all the stuff about the title challenge, title this, title that, and you read it, and my name is nowhere to be found. And I'm the only one in the top 10 in a division that's not or beat top five guys multiple times. I fought 14 fights. Every fight but one has been a ranked opponent. And I'm the only person that wasn't in the, in the fucking talk. It hurts. So I went out there, I had to hurt him. Have you seen what John Jones has tweeted recently? Well, you asked. I'm going to let him ask. Sorry, you already went. Let me see what you said. Sorry, Sorry. I was going to say, I, I, knew, I know you mentioned that you were a bit more fired up out there, and now you've sort of calmed down a little bit. Is there a part of you that sort of regrets the show burning to Johnny? Or based on what you said, do you sort of stand by it? I don't regret what I said, but I regret the way I did. I should have been more professional. I've been here. You know, I told myself a bunch of times, no matter what happened, we're going to act like we've been there. And I apologize not just to Johnny, but to my family to my fans and to all my coaches that taught me better than that growing up. You don't do that. You be respectful, you shake a man's hand, and you act like you've been there. You're a good sport. And kind of on that same note, you're talking about his antics. Do you feel like he overlooked you in this fight at all? 100%. They all do. Go yeah. over, Doug. 
Glover told me after the fight, he said, I, I got to give it to you, man. I took the fight because I thought there was no way you could beat me. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. They keep looking past me. Like I said, a lot of people are like, oh, mention Corey's name, this is this. And I inbox, I'm like, shh, don't say my name. Let him sleep over because these strikes most when you don't expect it. Yeah. Now, what were you saying? So, he said uh, so much for the early Christmas present. Um, what do you think about that? And, and what do you think... Uh, I know what he wanted. He, he thought he was going to hope he can get a fight in December. I'm pretty sure that's what he means, December 14th. Uh -huh. But uh, you had a chance to fight me when I wanted to, so now you're going to wait. And, you know, uh, I made my statement. My name is going to be hot. It's like if you strike when the iron's hot, I'm hot right now. You can't say I'm not. So uh, it's my terms, you know. I know you're the champ. But I got things I want to do, things I got to handle, and I'll be ready. I'm still going to be training. Don't worry. But when the time comes, when we negotiate this contract, whatever it is, we'll set a date and we're going to dance. Because Dana White like, told TMZ that they're looking at this Reyes fight. Will you guys be going to Dana White after this and trying to get the conversation started right away, trying to get it in there before they sort of book this Reyes thing? Because it looks like they're targeting it already. I'll leave that to my manager. You know, if they want to give it to uh, Reyes and they want to go in December, that's fine. I'll fight the winner when I'm ready. Corey, last month in the interview with The Athletic, you said, well, this is an opportunity to say fuck you to the UFC. I'm assuming you feel, feel pretty vindicated, you know, you should be real the high train, as you said. What happens if they continue to overlook you and they give it to Reyes and then they look for another contender instead of yourself? Release me. If you don't want to give me what I've earned, let me go. I'm hot. My, 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 my proof, Corey. I'll go somewhere where somebody's going to respect me. You know, that's the thing. A lot of people feel like you need the UFC. I don't want to speak out when shit happened with John Jones at 232. There's a reason why I spoke out. I don't need the UFC. I love being here. Don't get me wrong. I love this. I love my job. I love the opportunity to inspire and go around the world and do that. And I've never been the person to depend on somebody for my what I need. You know, if I got to go back to work at 9 to 5, I'll do it. I'm going to make sure my family eat. But if I'm out here proving myself, I'm doing what you want. I just did exactly what you want. Knockouts and excitement, tell me they're not exciting. I did that. So they still not giving me my worth. Let me go. I go somewhere else. You talked about your family. This is your first fight with your son being born. What does that mean to go back home to him with the victory? That's the best feeling in the world. I know he's watching. We got him in the hotel with baby. He don't understand what he's watching, but the baby said he got the fight. I don't know it. And then one day he'll look back and we can break it down. So I'm saying, you, you was there, so he was in New York. You spent that couple of days in the fight with me. You was my inspiration, you know. Today I was in there stretching the foam rolling with him on the floor. Just watching him crawl around. I even took a little break from my time trying to put him to sleep and just, just keep him from fussing. You know, that's my man. That's my homie. I what, did it all for him. What does it mean that you and your, your good friend and teammate, Caitlin Chukagan, could potentially be fighting for titles next? What does that mean to you? I mean, that's what the plan was when we talked. You know, she said no to Valentina the first time because she was getting married. And I feel like they did the same thing to her they did to me. I said no to fight Gus when I, my son was being born. They kind of pushed us to the back, and I told her, I said, be careful what you say. Be careful when you answer that question, because they will push you to the back of the bus. I'm dealing with it right now. Don't go through that. But it was her wedding, you know? You can't just argue with that. And I told her, she said, you know what? Let's go get these straps. I said, exactly. Let's go prove ourselves. We go out there, two dominating wins, but we both going to fight for the title. Let's get, bring it back to Jersey. Do you feel like this is a good lesson for your kid as well? That you know, when you want something, you go out and take it. You don't wait for it. You just, you know, this is kind of setting the him up for for success down the road as well. Hundred percent, one hundred and fifty percent. The same thing my father taught me growing up. It take you getting older to realize. You know, he used to tell me, no, not like I say it all the time. When I speak like this, not being racial or anything. I grew up in an all white neighborhood. So eventually, I got me and my brother. We got pulled over and stuff for no reason. So y'all said, well, you gotta do something. Son. You gotta make sure you do it 110 percent more than them. So they go 100 percent. You gotta go 200 percent because you're not gonna get what you deserve. As many times we beat the star, this is the thing. You're not gonna get that because you're not in the community like them. Their parents are known. You gotta go out there and take it. You know. And at times I figured you go hard, go hard, blah blah blah. I did. And at times I earned my spot. A lot of times I was overlooked. But now I was a grown man with a son. And my brother and my father talked to me and understand what they said. You gotta take it. Especially my brothers, I can feel you hurt. It's time to go take it. You gotta go get that respect. You know, I'm sitting there in the tunnel, and guys from New York, I train in New York weekly. You hear these New Yorkers saying, oh, fuck you, Corey, you better get knocked out by Johnny Walker. This is the thing. I'm one of your own, and you disrespect me. I just started dancing to it. You to go out there and take it. And the shushing, and the finger I threw up, I apologize for that too, but that was to them. All that you said, remember me. Like I said, I don't want no new friends. Don't go follow me now. Don't try to jump on my wagon. You had your chance. Stay where you at. Corey, you really managed to sort of channel this disrespect into great performances and ability to speak out in some weird way. Was this disrespect towards you a blessing in the sense that it's kind of giving you a chip on your shoulder? 100%. That's what I need. It's 
what I needed. You know, the fact that they was overlooking and kept saying, there's no way Corey could. The same thing they said when I won out to the fight. There's no way. Everybody else was like, no way. You can bring him to the wall. No way Corey can win this. He only got three fights. He only got to fight for six months. Guess what I did? When I got one, six second knockouts in the finals. I need that. It put the dog in. Like I said, the dog. The UFC want a dog. They want excitement. They want something to talk about. Can I give it to them? Are you not entertained? I mean, we saw it, for example, a guy like Chell Sun for a long time. He was very respectful, but then when he started speaking out more, he kind of connected with fans on another level. I know you don't want to be disrespectful, but is this going to be the new Corey Anderson that we see the guys out there every single time? You show off your personality a little bit more, you sort of bring that excitement level to the fights as well? Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to fight just like I did today. I'm, but I never go to stoop to other level. Kel Sun, I'm talking trash on people for the fight, you know. But that being said, F Kel Sun. You know, I heard what he said about me. It was a thing. No, but I never, I mean, I respect him at the same time. But at the same time, what did you do, Kel? Yeah. You got there, but you didn't do shit. You know, you're going to say something. I mean, who gets up and stop what they're doing and go watch TV, see Corey Anderson's fight? Go Kel, I bet you they watch it now. I bet you so. Do you think the build up to your fight with John Jones will be a tense one? I mean, both of you guys sort of don't really like each other. Do you believe that fight week would be an interesting one for the fans to see? You would hope. I, I think it could be. You know, because generally a beef between me and him, you know, like I spoke out and nobody else did that. And I know he's got some animosity to me. Like I said, I showed up at his event, the autograph signed, threw him off. Got them all cussing and throwing fingers in front of fans and cursing in front of kids and stuff. You know, made him look bad in the public. I know he don't like me for that, and that's okay. I didn't go there to get anything started. I went there just to let you know this is my time and my presence. You know, just like this is my video. Has he DM'd you at all? I know, I know that he DM's a lot of people personally on Twitter and through social media. Has he tried to reach out to you behind the scenes and say anything? You know, if he say something to my fans, like he go on my post. And he called me cornball once. I said something back. He didn't say something. And one of my fans said something to him. He attacked them. He attacked my fans. I always say it like, yo, direct that energy to me. Don't speak to my fans because they can't get their hands on you. I can't. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations.